Hello, Pastor Steve Waldron. I hope you're having a great day or night in Jesus. Thank you so much for being with us. We're looking at manuscripts that have been destroyed throughout the centuries over a millennium, biblical manuscripts. Thanks so much for being here. Of course, it's a tragedy when biblical manuscripts are destroyed. But uh, we're on TextusReceptusBibles.com. We'll get some of the information from there, some other places. So again, thanks for being here. Join us daily. Hit the bell notification when you subscribe and give us a thumbs up. So on this, it's got a, a a section, like an article on here. So he says this, certain schisms like those of the dynastists in North Africa and the Miletians in Egypt persisted long after the persecutions. He's talking about the 10 imperial persecutions of the Roman church. So there were persecutions still going on. Almost every Christian manuscript in Egypt was destroyed, which is amazing because it's very arid climate. There is very good for preserving manuscripts. Now, we know from Fox's Book of Martyrs, Martyrs Mirror, many other sources that there were manuscripts being burned, destroyed all over the world, really, basically. Um, you had institutionalized Christianity rising and anything that abutted against that, that which claimed to be apostolic came from the times of the apostles. They had different manuscripts than the institutionalized church in many instances, especially in the West, and they would destroy their manuscripts. They would destroy whole cities, say the Lord knows who's his, that type thing. So now that brings us to 1453. Again, that's Martyr's Mirror, Fox's Book of Martyrs, the real three-volume edition, not the little 4% edition most people get. The fall of Constantinople. Most terrifying part for the 15th century Europe was the fall of Constantinople, formerly known as Byzantium. On 28th May 1453, Ottoman Turks under Sultan Mehmet II captured this lingering fragment of the Christian successor to the Roman Empire. The loss of Constantinople caused great terror among Christians. The Pope called it the shame of Christendom. And many people would say that Islam, if you study it when it came out, it was seen by Christianity as like a sect of Christianity, believe it or not. And, you know, you had Kadijah coming out of a, a Christian monastery, a broad sense of that term, Christian, those type things. And also, fast forwarding a little bit from that era, you had in, you know, the 10th century or so AD, you had the Boga Mills, which were huge in the Eastern Empire. They were exposed, a lot of people, Tom Weiss or others, say historically those were basically Acts 238 people and any manuscripts they had that was contrary to the institutional church would have been destroyed as well. So Constantinople had become a great center of learning and in it were copies, perhaps even originals of manuscripts long since lost from the Western Empire. Constantinople had been thoroughly Greek, using a Greek Bible for a thousand years. So there are also men competent in the language and all that plays a role in preserving the biblical manuscripts. The city's fall in 1450 removed such men to leave the ruin of Byzantium, bringing with them a literary, linguistic, and cultural legacy. Although many manuscripts were rescued, a great number were lost. And so this is where a lot of people think this is where Codex Vaticanus would have been coming from, that because it was on vellum, it was going to be used as a palum pest because it was such a corrupted manuscript. They brought it west. It was uh, then found in the Vatican Library around that time. So Erasmus was born 13 years after the fall of Constantinople, and when the dust settled, no scholar of such eminence was better placed in history to witness the legacy of this historic event, the fall of Constantinople. When Erasmus traveled to Italy, he witnessed firsthand much of the remnant of Constantinople scholarship, which caused the Renaissance almost immediately, and, and people debate about that, and the Reformation eventually, people debate about that less so. The Reformation, Erasmus lived in an age just prior to the most turbulent times in the Christian world that they've known, and that's, again, 
Christian broad sense. By the start of the Reformation, many of the most sacred manuscripts extant at that time had been brought into Europe just prior to the Reformation. Erasmus had access to everything Europe had to offer. By the end, countless Greek manuscripts were destroyed as a direct result of the Reformation's severity. So, of course, Luther gets a Bible, uh, prints that, and, and even Erasmus Bible. Others, they begin to get put on the index of prohibited books, the index prohibitum. So, wars, wars, and more wars. Now, we're going to skip ahead. Um, the Napoleonic War of 1803 to 1815 saw the ransacking of many religious institutions, monetary universities, and churches throughout Europe. In 1809, Napoleon took Codex Vaticanus from the Vatican Library, brought the manuscript to Paris as a victory trophy. During that time in Paris, scholars examined it together with other manuscripts from the Vatican, but not perceived the need of a new and full collation of the Codex. It was seen as being little worth other than its antiquity. In 1815, the Codex, or the book, was returned to the Vatican Library. It's estimated that over a million religious books and manuscripts from antiquity were destroyed, go forward another century, in World War I alone. The countless libraries containing ancient manuscripts destroyed during World War II is a tragedy in itself. If we add this to the text, lost due to natural disaster, fire, theft, looting, you start to get a sense of what's lost. So, Many times in the 1500s, they may have had access and, and almost certainly did to who knows how many thousands of manuscripts we don't have access to today because they've been destroyed. So the manuscripts destroyed since the time of Erasmus. Now there's a table here, I'll try to read through some of it. The table below is not definitive, but it does give you a good sense of the thousands of manuscripts and volumes lost since the time of Erasmus. All these institutions contained valuable religious documents, many of them very rare and irreplaceable. With there being so many manuscripts that Erasmus was able to see that we cannot see today, because they no longer exist, the question must be asked, is textual criticism even relevant today? So let's run down a few destruction. Okay, the Madrasa Library in Granada, Crown of Castile, 1499. Uh, Cardinal Cisneros destroyed that. The library was attacked by troops of the perpetrator in late 1499. The books were taken to Plaza Bibrambla, where they were burned in public. The Bibliotheca Carvinia in uh, Often, Ottoman Empire, 1526. Troops of the Ottoman Empire library was destroyed by the Ottomans. Glasney College, Penryn, Cornwall, England, 1548. Royal officials, the smashing and loosening of the Cornish colleges at Glasney and Grand Talk brought an end to the formal scholarship, which had helped sustain the Cornish language, Cornish cultural identity. Who knows what was destroyed there? The Raglan Library, Raglan Castle, Wales, 1646. Parliamentary Army, the Earl of Worcester's library was burnt during the English Civil War by forces under the command of Thomas Fairfax. The Guildhall Library in London, 1666, the Great Fire of London, destroyed 436 acres of central London, the badly damaged Guildhall, and burnt down the library, which held many manuscripts and original working papers for the King James Bible. The University of Copenhagen Library, in Copenhagen, Denmark, a fire in 1728. The collections of the University of Library go back to 1482, three years before the foundation of the University of Copenhagen in 1479. Almost all the 35,000 books and manuscripts of the University of Library were consumed by flames during the fire of Copenhagen. The Royal Library of Portugal, Ribeira Palace, Lisbon, 1755. The Great Lisbon Earthquake, the natural disaster. The Library of Congress in the U.S., 1814. You know what's going on there. Troops of the British Army. The library was destroyed during the War of 1812. They also burnt Thomas Jefferson's books. <laughs> because they thought he was a heretic. The University of Alabama, 1865, during the American Civil War, Union troops destroyed most of the buildings on the University of Alabama campus, including its library of approximately 7,000 volumes. Birmingham Central Library, Birmingham, England, 1879. 1879, a fire broke out behind a wooden partition serving as a temporary wall. During building operations, fires caused extensive damage. 50 thousand volumes involved only one thousand saved 
Could you imagine the Library of the Catholic University of Leuven, Belgium, 1914, German occupation uh, troops. Library was set on fire as part of the burning of the entire city. Attempt to use terror to quell Belgian resistance to occupation. University of Berlin, World War II, 20,000 volumes lost. The Hessisch London's Bibliothek, World War II, 760,000 volumes lost, including 2,217 Incunabella, which is before 1500 uh, writings, like printing before 1500, and 4,500 manuscripts. National Library of Germany in Frankfurt, 2 million volumes lost. The Municipal State Library of Dortmund, Germany, 250,000 volumes lost. The Sachsik, London's Bibliothek in Sachsik, I'm probably pronouncing that, 300,000 volumes lost. The Library of Bremen, World War II, again, 150,000 volumes lost. University and State Library of Hamburg, 600,000 volumes lost. Library of the Catholic University of Levin, Belgium, 1940, caught fire during German invasion. National Library of Serbia, 1941, destroyed during the World War II bombing of Belgrade. Methodius Library, Bulgaria, Allied bombing. Uh, Nazi troops, the Lusky uh, Library of Warsaw. Um, Beirut, Lebanon, 1975 fighting. Beirut's downtown National Library was located. According to some sources, 1,200 of the most precious manuscripts ever disappeared. And no memory is left of the library's organization operational procedures at that time. Sri Lanka, a mob, May 1981. At least 95,000 volumes destroyed the second largest library collection in South Asia. Central University Library of Bucharest, Romanian Land Forces, 1989, burnt down during the Romanian Revolution. Sarajevo, um, Oriental Institute of Sarajevo, the library completely destroyed during the siege of Sarajevo. The National and University Library of Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, Abkhazian. Institute of History and Language, destroyed during that 1992 war. Taliban militia, uh, destroyed 55,000 books and old manuscripts in Afghanistan. Iraq Library, 2003, several libraries looted, set on fire, damaged, destroyed in various degrees during 2003 uh, war. Cairo, 2011, uh, 30,000 volumes saved out of a total of 200,000 volumes. Uh, Mali, Timbuktu, Islamist militia, uh, burned down a library of 20,000 with only a fraction of the manuscripts having been found. Tripoli, Christian library was burned down. It contained, get this, North Africa, Sebais, it contained over 80,000 manuscripts and books. Sarajevo, 214, I just can't even go into all this, 15,000. Uh, Mosul Library, ISIS book burning. Libraries of Anbar Province, ISIS bur burnings. Um, Moscow, fire spread 200 square miles, or square meters on third floor, roof caved in, additional water damage, ambient temperature too high for self-freezing of damaged work. Library contains 14 million books, including rare texts in ancient Slavic languages, biblical languages, documents from the League of Nations and all this, uh, reports from the U.S. dating back as far as 1789. 14 million books. This I don't know how many of them were destroyed. One last one, Mosul, Iraq, 215, ISIS bur burning, 8,000 rare old books and manuscripts. Syriac books, on and on destroyed so we don't have to do that you'll need to turn off airplane mode well what is siri listening to me about that was weird and i've even got on airplane mode wow so that was really strange so you can see a lot of destruction of manuscripts so sometimes older 
textual criticisms better because we just don't have the manuscripts, the few little scraps we found over the years. Don't compare to the hundreds of million destroyed over the years. God bless you. Thanks for being here. See you later. Bye-bye.